As a position coach, coordinator, or head coach, Dave Campo spent 18 years with the Dallas Cowboys. Tonight he shifts into analyst mode, talking modern-day Cowboys and Super Bowl 49 tonight on Sports Sunday. I'm Mike Ducey, and we do welcome uh, Dave Campo here to, uh, to our studios tonight. Uh, coach, uh, last year in Dallas was 2011, then three years at the University of Kansas as defensive coordinator. And now you're, you're retired. You're a little hesitant to say you're totally retired as a coach, but is, you're trying to work, move into the media game here maybe, huh? Well, I, I've kind of cut the cord, Mike, to be honest with you. I think that uh, I, I, I love being in the Dallas area. I enjoy local sports in Dallas, and I'm looking forward to maybe getting involved a little bit with, with the community and, and uh, see what we can do from a media standpoint. The only Dave Campo we've heard the last few years around here has been the fake Dave Campo on the ticket. Have you heard that, and what do you think of that? Well, I've heard all of those guys on the ticket. <laughs> they do an awful lot of good things, and, and it's fun. You know, I, I think some people say, well, you know, how do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about it. If they're doing stuff with, about you, <laughs> yeah. they probably like you. So I think I'm all right there. I want to get to Super Bowl highlights here in a second. But what's it like to watch a Super Bowl on TV when you've been on the sideline or in the booth coaching three of them? Yeah. Well, the thing that sticks out more than anything else is I know how the players are feeling and how the coaches are feeling, especially going into the game. And then watching it on TV, I, you know, it, it brings back an awful lot of memories, and especially that national anthem and those jets going over the top of that stadium. And again, we're back with former Cowboys coach Dave Campo. New England rallies from 10 points down in the fourth and hangs on with some stunning final moments in this game, Dave. And, and, and let's go through the final moments uh, of this ball game. First, curse with the unbelievable catch. It looked as though the Seahawks were just on the doorstep uh, of, of winning the game. But then the inexplicable decision by Daryl Bevel, the Seattle offensive coordinator, to, uh, to throw the football. There's, there's the catch, first of all. Seattle was in great shape there, obviously. Well, that was a that was a very unusual decision. I, I felt that uh, you know they had four downs to get it, so I thought that they would run the ball one time and then kind of see what happened from there. As a defensive coach, you like to see the ball go in the air, you know, when you're inside that 12 yard line. So for for me, it was uh, a very very surprising decision, and I think that when they lined up in that inverted wing, uh, I think uh, Butler knew that that ball was coming in there. But it's stunning. And when you look at the weapon that Seattle has, the most effective goal line running back in the NFL, I mean, it's, it's a gift at yeah. that point uh, no for a question. defensive coordinator. No question. The ball goes in the air. You've got a chance. And with uh, Marshawn Lynch, who's a beast, uh, it, it, it was very unusual. The game in general, again, it went back and forth. New England looked like it controlled the game for the vast majority of it, but it didn't look that way on the scoreboard. Then Russell Wilson, whom I've underestimated so many times I can't even count it, gives his team a 10-point lead. Then New England comes back and, uh, and steals it. Uh, Super Bowls aren't always entertaining, but this one was a great one to watch. That was a great Super Bowl, I, I think, especially from a defensive standpoint. There were a lot of big plays made, a lot of good hitting uh, going. The one thing about uh, Russell Wilson is he's a winner. And he gave them a chance to win, and, and it just didn't work out today. I want to talk about the Patriots and, you know, the, the, the scandals and stuff in a moment here. But first, just New England from uh, – Daryl Johnston was here last week, and he said he was torn because he didn't want Seattle to win back-to-back -back like right. the Cowboys had. And he didn't want New England – to win a, a fourth yeah. either. I don't know what your emotions are when you look at that, but there's no denying what, what Belichick's been able to do in the program he's well, put with, together there. With what they've done with Brady and Belichick, you know, obviously it puts them on a different level than, than what's been going on lately, you know, and I think that that uh, shows that they've got a class organization from the standpoint of doing the right things in the draft, doing the right things in, in uh, the free agent market, and having a quarterback that can make big plays and an outstanding coach. A class organization in, in one respect, but you know, a lot of people are going to talk about the fact that they've been caught cheating once in Spygate and may get caught again now with, with Deflategate. Do you think that puts a cloud over their accomplishments at all? Well, I think there's a little bit of a cloud from the standpoint that now that it's happened a few times, I think people kind of look at the New England Patriots a little differently because of that. Uh, every player and every coach tries to get an edge, and that's because there's so much pressure to win, so much pressure to to uh, succeed at what they're doing, uh, but when there's a rule, and I think the NFL probably has too many rules, to be honest with you, but when there's a rule involved and, and they don't uh, go with those rules, then the integrity of the game is a question, and obviously the head coach is responsible for everything that goes on, whether he 
was involved in it or not. And so uh, we'll see what happens here in the next few days. Yeah, as that uh, investigation, supposedly independent investigation, continues, Patriots uh, get their, their fourth Super Bowl win. Let's talk some Cowboys uh, now. A 12-win regular season, a playoff win, a heartbreaking loss at Green Bay to end the season. What came together, in your opinion, as, as you watch this team to the extent that you could watch them, that, that made a difference this year for Jason Garrett's team? Well, I think it was very difficult. Jason's an outstanding football coach, but I think it was very difficult for him to make the decision uh, to run the ball as much as they did. And I think that's a credit to the organization for, uh, you know, looking at it and seeing that uh, Romo's the type of quarterback that can take you to the Super Bowl, but he needs help. And when they made the decision to uh, sign the offensive lineman and to have DeMarco Murray there, who's, who's an outstanding running back, the, the help from the running game is what allowed them to be the difference makers this year. Defensive standpoint, obviously you got a lot of respect for Marinelli and what he was able to do after just a brutal year the year before with his defense. Yeah, Marinelli's an outstanding coach uh, and, and, and a fine gentleman as well. You know, I know him very well. Rod's a, a, a class guy, and, and uh, he did a great job this year of getting the guys to play hard. And once they started playing extremely hard, then they started believing that they could do some things. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've got a pretty good football, defensive football team. And I think that they were way, way above what everybody felt, and that's what, that was one of the differences. The difficult offseason question, one of some, uh, a few for Jerry Jones, is you got Des Bryant and DeMarco Murray, both his free agents out there. It's going to be tough to sign both long term. If you're Jerry, <laughs> if you're Jerry, which one do you keep if you can only choose one? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's uh, going to be a tough decision. I, I, I've always felt that the running game you know, as good as DeMarco is, uh, an outstanding back, a lot of it is based on those guys up front, the guys that are, that are blocking. And, and when they made the decision to go get some linemen, uh, that, that was a big decision for them. Uh, I think that, you know, the, I feel that you can find running backs in, in different spots in the draft, but you can't find those guys that can make the big play for you. And I think Des Bryant can do that. And I think you've got to get the ball down the field to win. And Des gives you a chance to win. So I'd, I'd have to lean a little bit that way. But if I, if I could find a way, I'd find a way to keep them both. Because you do tend to look at things, obviously, still through a defensive lens for the most part. And you're looking at which guy would I least like to see on the other side. And that would be Des Bryant of those two. Absolutely. Two players with local ties uh, voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, uh, Woodrow Wilson product, Tim Brown, the great Oakland receiver, and uh, one of your guys, Charles Haley, after all these years, finally gets in. Your emotions as you learn the news that Charles Haley will become a Hall of Famer. Very, very excited. I think Charles Haley uh, went through a tremendous transformation. He started off on bad terms a little bit with San Francisco and then came with us, and Jimmy made the decision to bring him in, and he was singly probably the most uh, uh, influential difference maker for our defense going from a pretty good defense early to a to an outstanding defense. The guy would love to play football. Uh, he was a little tough to coach at times because he, he, he felt he had a lot of answers, but he was in the end a team player and, and I'm just excited for him. He was on my coaching staff as well uh, for a little bit and uh, I, I, I really love the guy. He's, he's a winner. You and Jimmy were, you know, were together for seven years, I guess, between college and and, uh, and the NFL. He was tough on you sometimes. Do you think he belongs in the Hall of Fame? I do. I think that what he did with this program, uh, with the Cowboys, uh, warrants the fact that he is a, a difference maker as a coach. Uh, he was able to, to orchestrate some things along with uh, Jerry and, and getting some players here. And the way he approached it, knowing that we needed a bunch of players, not just one player, uh, I think he deserves a, an awful lot of recognition. Let's talk about Dave Campos' career here a little bit, a largely successful career between your time in, in college and, and in the NFL. What are, what are your fondest memories if you look back at the things that you'll, you'll always remember from your coaching career? Well, I think, number one, uh, the first memory that I can have that would, uh, would be great to me was going to Chicago that that uh, first year we made the playoffs and, and the memory of Bill Bates intercepting the ball uh, <laughs> to have us win that first playoff game and coming to the sidelines and I jumped in the air and he caught me and it was a great feeling. Uh, that combined with being able to call a Super Bowl and, 
in uh, 1995 uh, as a defensive coordinator and winning a Super Bowl. I'll never forget those times. Those, those are those are big things. What would you do differently in the three years you were head coach? Uh, there were not good times for the organization, obviously, uh, record-wise. Anything you did, you did do differently if you had it to do over again? Well, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that you look back and you say, well, if I'd have approached this a little bit differently. I, I think I knew what I was getting into when I took the job. Uh, we knew that, you know, the, the triplets were kind of coming towards the end of their career. And, uh, you know, I felt that, I still felt that we could we could get it done, but there were a couple situations during the year. Uh, San Francisco had an opportunity to to put the game away with two minutes left, and and uh, went for the field goal, and the kid missed it, and they end up taking it down. Things like that, little things like that. But I I thought overall we tried to do things the right way. I think our players played as hard as they could play. Uh, I felt comfortable with that. Tell you one one thing I'll always remember about about Dave Campo. Uh, Parcells was coming in. I mean, you were gone as head coach, and I remember being at an event. Just it was just a few days, I think, after you'd been replaced, and you had committed to do a speaking event, not a large event, but a fairly small event involving kids. I think at a school, and you were still there even during that time. And I think that's that's the kind of class that people remember Dave Campo. Well, for. I appreciate that, Mike. I, I'll say this. Uh, I had a tremendous opportunity to be a part of the Dallas Cowboys. I had a tremendous opportunity to be a head coach in the National Football League. So, you know, I'm cognizant of business. I understand what you have to do. I understand that you have to win. And uh, I'm still, I'm not in coaching. I'm in coaching because I love the kids yeah. and love to be around the players. And you're a good talker, too. So you can, you can do this for a living if you want to. And you're well, a good I, singer, too. Well, and you could probably do that. I'm out of the singing business, but hopefully I can do a few shows down the road. Do a, we can get a duet together, man. <laughs> Dave Campo, great to see you again. Thanks Thank for coming you, in tonight. Yeah.